Going good. Uh, How can I help you out? Questions. Uh, so I got another potential deal um, lined up is right behind the, one of the fire damage properties I looked at, actually. And uh, it turns out, so it was a single family home, but I guess this guy may have converted it into a duplex almost. He said it could still be a single family, but he's basically got a hole upstairs with a kitchen, bath, everything upstairs and downstairs. Now, looking at the property, I was trying to do comps, and there's only one comp that's anywhere similar to this property in the whole area, roughly in a mile and a half radius that I could use. And I know that he was renting it for 955 for one of the units. Or so so I, I multiplied that by two to come up with the, you know, the 1% rule. Uh, the question on that is, should I combine the uh, average price per square foot with the one comp and the 1% rule or just go off the 1% rule? Let me ask a couple questions, Darren. So okay. first of all, is that permanent or unpermanent? Uh, that one, I don't know. All right. So you're gonna have to look at the property appraiser and see some okay. of these guys. So w what city is this in? Chattanooga. Chattanooga. So, uh, as you, you're, you're born and raised in Chattanooga. Uh, no. You're born Lived in the South. I was uh, born in West Virginia, West Virginia. So you know how, uh, some, how do I say this nicely? Uh, redneck engineers are, uh, in the yeah. South. Where yeah. uh, <laughs> you familiar with that? Yeah, I'm one of them. <laughs> a lot of people love doing that real estate, you know. Oh, let me go uh, add a spigot on here. Let me go uh, add a little trailer here. Let me do this. Oh, this is mostly okay. in the South. People from Boston don't like doing this, but like I've seen this too much. <laughs> where they'll do just they'll do stuff to houses that are not permitted, right? Um, okay. And that causes a huge problem because a lot of cash buyers are like, I, "This is not a permanent structure. Like this thing, if it's going on fire, the insurance won't cover it, right?" So the first thing you got to figure out if this thing's permanent or not. Um, if they add stairs and like anything crazy, extra doors, that you you can use as leverage to get a reduction on the deal. Um, just yeah. FYI. So um, on, the, on the property appraiser side, if it says single family residence, yeah. then technically that's what it is, right? Most likely. Um, if, okay. It should be zoned as a duplex. So the guy definitely did his own little engineering on it, which okay. uh, is a no-go, right? Um, so that's going to cost him some, some more money. Okay. So the cool part, your cash buyer is going to come to you and say, what the heck, man? And you're going to get a good reduction uh, because of that, because he's going to understand that and you'll be fine. He already knows there's no permitting allowed, but it's fine. Um, so okay. the problem is you might have to come this as a single family because it is a single family. It did not have the conversion right. So you're going to have to comp it as a single family, not a duplex. Okay. All right. And then... Uh... Related to today's video on uh, pre foreclosures in Chattanooga, and I, I'm on uh, prop stream every week. I mean, uh, usually every day, maybe every other day. Um, and, and the pre foreclosures and the auction dates is one of the uh, quick lists at the top. And I noticed that, you know, uh, last like maybe two or three weeks ago, I think we had only like two pre foreclosures. And then all yep. of a sudden we had a handful, but they are all already have auction dates. So I think there might be a little bit of lag there. And I'm curious, should I just go to the uh, courthouse or something to pull the pre-probates or I mean pre-foreclosures? Yeah. So PropStream batch, all these services, they pull APIs. And what PropStream and all the services do, they pull two things mostly. Uh, list pendants, which is basically a fancy Latin term, I think. Uh, basically, when someone puts a legal action on the property. So usually a bank, hey, you didn't pay me for four or five bank payments. I'm filing a list pendants, which is fancy talk for... I'm doing court action to get the house back um, or a notice of default, which is a little easier to understand. They're basically, they're putting a notice out there that this person's defaulted on their mortgage. Okay. Uh, you can look those up with the public records. PropStream automatically does it. Sometimes like they can't make the API connect, which is basically like an automatic thing. So you might have to do it yourself, which Darren is really cool for you because that means everyone else in Chattanooga that's trying to use PropStream, they're going to get bad data. And you going to go to public records and just get the fresh ones right now. Uh, so that, okay. that's actually good news. No to default right. and list pendants. Okay. And then uh, one more thing related to uh, pulling the public records. Have you ever actually had to file a FOIA yourself? Have you ever oh, gone yeah. through it? Uh, so 
do I need to uh, get with a lawyer to do that, or is that something that I can just fill out myself and then send to the public or to the uh, county attorney or whatever, the city no, attorney? Fill out yourself. Say don't or, or do? Nope, FOIA request. Um, submit it, email it, whatever. Okay. Because uh, I, I, they won't let me get the... Um, the uh, 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 code violations. So okay. I, I literally spent uh, like five hours uh, working with them trying to get it. They gave me the run around and then it turned out that the um, manager there knew exactly what list I wanted the whole time. And oh, only that. up until the point to where I finally had to explain what I was doing to the lady who was trying to help me. Did the manager tell me that? No, we used to do that a long time ago, but we didn't update our software to make it easy to do that. And since it takes like five hours and ties up my computer, we're not doing it anymore. Okay. Was that the head code enforcement? Yeah. So you are probably going to have to go to a city attorney and ask. That sounds scary. It's free. You're a tax paying okay. citizen. You have the right to that. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much like, that's like, it's kind of funny, uh, but it's just basically government being lazy, which is what they're best what at. Yeah. They're best at doing that. Uh, he just doesn't want to do any extra work, which is fine. Um, so you're going to have to just make them work. Uh, so talk to someone who's a little more important, city attorney. Okay. So go, go to the attorney first, and then if that doesn't work out, do it for you? Yeah, usually public records has an attorney. Or there's an attorney there at the um, courthouse okay. that people are going to talk to about records and stuff. Have a conversation. Okay. You're a legal right. tax citizen, and you want this public information, and I'm not being allowed it? What are my options? And if you got to make this uh, very clear that they said they can do it, they just don't want to do it, do the work for it. Okay. It's pretty easy. Sometimes that gets around it, or you just got to do a FOIA, which is fine. Okay. And then uh, I guess one one more quick question back on the deal that I might have or, you know, in the process of. Um, so if I'm going to have to comp that as a single family, the only yeah. other houses around, like I say, I found one that has five beds. Uh, there's, it's one less bathroom, but if I drop that down to, uh, four beds, I can get comps that are similar, but obviously it's four beds where this one has five. Do you I need to, to just estimate with the square feet? What's the, okay. what's roughly the square footage on it? It's uh 24, uh, 07, I think no 24, 70. Woo. It's a lot of square feet. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a two story house. Are they separated really well? Uh, I haven't got inside yet. I'm trying to yeah. set up a time to go meet and see. Might um, be a mess, but... man. <laughs> I think yeah. it's a mess, dude. I, I've had people do that little redneck engineering <clears throat> worth a uh, 1,500 square foot house with 10 bedrooms, and the guy just oh put walls up. <laughs> yes, that's a lot. Mess, dude. So that's... that's why I asked him a square feet. 2,400, that's actually really reasonable. Um, I You just got to look at it because sometimes it's like the – you know, the first level is three bedrooms and the above is two, but it's separated really well with a wall. Um, you just got to be careful, man. When they're doing upstairs, downstairs with unpermitted uh, stuff, uh, okay. you can get hairy. So as a cash buyer myself, I'd be freaked out. Okay. All right. I'll look into that then and it's see. It's worth uh, going in person though, man. It's what? It's worth going in person and definitely at the right price. Cash buyer is willing to deal with that risk. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right, that's it. I appreciate it, Zach. All right, appreciate it, Darren. Come back for any help. You Thank need. you. Thanks, man.